Hi everyone, my name is Samuel Yusuf. I am a data scientist on the recommendations team at Wayfair. And today I am going to be discussing a very popular technique um, in recommender systems called collaborative filtering. The idea behind collaborative filtering is that we are trying to predict a uh, user's preference for an item by using all the feedback we have about that user and the feedback about other users. Um, for, an, for example, we could think of if we have three customers at Wayfair, and if customer one buys product ABE, customer two buys product ACB, and customer three only bought um, product D. And if we want to make a recommendation for customer one and two, we can see that they are actually very similar to each other in the products that they've bought. And so uh, we could recommend a new product to customer 2E and then we could show product C to customer 1. Um, in practice, collaborative filtering is broken down into two main umbrellas, uh, memory-based and model-based. And today I'm going to give an example about each of these different approaches. Um, in memory-based approach, um, we usually start off with a matrix M where the columns in this matrix refers to products and the rows in this matrix refers to customers. And the each entry in the matrix, um, a, a value in this matrix refers to the rating that one customer have actually given a product that they've bought. And if we want to make a, or make a prediction about what this customer will rate this product, the first step that we do is we need to define some kind of similarity measure between customers. So we could say all the customers um, in this matrix are similar by some kind of metric. And the one popular metric that's commonly used is cosine similarity. After defining how similar one customer is from another, um, the second step is we could find a set of similar customers to the customer that we're trying to make a prediction on. And after we find the set, the third step is we could then get some kind of weighted average of the rating that those similar customers have rated the same item. And um, for this particular example, the top uh, the two most similar users to this user is this user and this user. And they both have values of 0 0.8 cosine similarity and 0 0.5. So if we want to make a recommendation or a prediction concerning what this user would rate, how this user would rate this item, we could take a weighted average and then we come up with a final prediction of 3.23. Um, the advantages of a memory-based approach is it's very, usually very easy to understand. We find, we make a prediction for a user, we find the similar users to that user, to that customer, and then we could find some, take some kind of weighted average of the ratings to get a final prediction. So the main challenge with a memory-based approach is the extreme sparsity of matrix M. If you consider in the past year of all the products that you've bought, how many of them have you actually rated? Um, if you're like me, it's probably not that many. And because of the extreme sparsity, we need some kind of approach, a model-based approach to, to solve our problem. And there are different types of memory-based um, or model-based approaches we could use. Um, one is clustering. Um, we could use matrix factorization or we could even use a deep learning approach. Um, today, I'm just gonna mention the matrix factorization um, example. Um, in matrix factorization, we are effectively trying to find a low rank approximation of the M matrix that we have. And so you can imagine here, we have our M matrix and we're trying to decompose it into two denser representation um, with a lower dimension R, where R is much less than the dimensions of the initial M matrix. Once we find the lower representation, U and V, if we multiply the, the two matrices, we can recover the values 
the uh, values are very similar to what we add in the initial M matrix and we can make predictions at the same time we can complete the, the matrix. So how can we solve for U and V? Um, usually we can, we can solve for U and V by using solving this objective function um, is an optimization problem and we can easily find um, the, the, the optimal U and V by using gradient descent. Uh, the pros of this approach is that prediction tends to be more accurate, online pro performance tends to be better, um, but the cons is that um, model base tends to be more computationally expensive, especially if we're using some kind of a complex deep learning approach. Um, and then the second um, disadvantage is that it is, tends to be difficult to interpret and difficult to, to actually give uh, why we're, we're coming up with the predictions that we did. Um, furthermore, a main drawback of collaborative filtering in general is that when we have a cold start problem. So that is when we have a new user or a new customer, a new customer or a new product. Um, we, we need other um, techniques to make recommendations in that, in that um, situation. Um, that's all for today. Thank you for listening and tune back for more videos um, here at Wayfair Explainer Series.